Hi, this is uh, Jeff Delorier from the Institute of Production and Recording in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm the program chair for the Sound Design for Visual Media department here at IPR, and today I'm going to be showing you how to export an AAF file out of Pro Tools. So as you can see, I have a Pro Tools session open here right now, and I've just kind of mocked something up here. So I've got uh, eight audio tracks with... Uh, some uh, regions on those tracks or clips as we call them now in Pro Tools 10 and uh, the point of the whole AAF thing is to be able to uh, take your media and your metadata including your Pro Tools session and all of its uh, regions and tracks track names uh, volume automation pan automation etc and uh, be able to open that in some sort of different DAW platform uh, like Cubase or Logic. As you can see, like I said, I've got a session here. Let's just pretend I needed to export this as an AAF out of Pro Tools. Firstly, and probably the most important thing with exporting an AAF out of Pro Tools, is it's based upon selected tracks. So uh, first things first, I'm going to pretend I don't have any tracks selected. I'm just going to go ahead and make it, make sure and select all the tracks I want. Now I'm going to go ahead and option click because I know I want all of them. But you need to be real careful with that because there may be tracks you don't want, want to include um, into your AAF. It depends on who you're sending it to and what you want them to be able to manipulate or see. So in this instance, everything. So I'm going to option click. But you could uh, hold um, down command and get real picky with... Uh, what uh, tracks you want to uh, export uh, to be included in the export. So from there I'm going to select the tracks, from there I'm going to go uh, File, um, Export, Selected Tracks as New AAF or OMF. And you're going to get the Export to OMF or AAF Output or Export dialog box. Here you're going to be able to select AAF or OMF, AAF Advanced Authoring Format, a newer uh, format, file format, more open source kind of file format, open standard. OMF actually is OMFI, most of the time abbreviated as just OMF. The file extension is also just OMF, uh, .aaf be, uh, for the AAF file. OMFI standing for Open Media Framework Interchange. Nowadays, um, AAF is becoming a lot more commonly used. Um, it's more compatible with a lot of different forms of software. OMFI is kind of uh, going away slowly but surely, though a lot of other, uh, a lot of software does still support the OMF standard. I am going to choose AAF. You're going to uh, select whether or not you want to enforce AVID compatibility based upon whether or not you're going to, you're exporting this to uh, an AVID uh, media composer workstation. In this instance, I'm not, so I'm going to uncheck it. If I do check this, it forces a whole list of um, items or things. Uh, that list is actually in uh, the Pro Tools uh, curriculum for 210p and 310p. Um, and it's also in the uh, user guide for Pro Tools 10 as well. So in this instance, I'm actually going to not enforce AVID compatibility. And I'm going to keep the frame rate, the same frame rate uh, as uh, my current project is. I could change it in this AAF export if I want, but remember you could get into trouble with that, this changing your uh, the, the, the project's uh, frame rate. Quantize edits to frame boundaries. Again, if I'm going over to a picture editing system uh, like Avid Media Composer or uh, Final Cut Pro, in this instance, <clears throat> I'm not, but if you were, what this is going to do is actually as you can see my mouse cursor here, it's actually going to quantize the head and tail of the clip uh, to a frame boundary. Um, actually just the head, I apologize. Um, it's going to quantize the head of the region to, the, to a frame boundary so that in that instance you actually have a region that is that's locking to a frame, a video frame boundary instead of a, an audio sample boundary because Media Composer works in frames, Pro Tools works in samples. So we want to lock to a frame boundary if we're going over to a picture editing system. And again, I'm not going to a picture editing system, so I'm not going to quantize edits to frame boundaries. Also, you could apply some sort of sample rate conversion if you wanted to change your sample rate. Typically, we don't. In this situation, I'm not going to apply sample rate conversion. I could actually also convert to different file types. 
I could also create an embedded AAF or OMFI, which in that instance, you'd actually, the media, the uh, files themselves would be embedded inside of the AAF file. I am not going to do embedded. I'm going to stick to wave. I'm going to do as little conversion as I can here. Bit depth, I could change to 16. I'm going to keep it at 24. Copy option, I've, have, I've got a couple options here. I can link to the source media, meaning when I export the AAF, I'm going to link to or continue to point to uh, or I should say the AAF or OMFI that's export is going, exported is going to link to um, the media files where they exist on my hard drive currently on this computer. If I choose copy from source media, that AAF or OMFI will be exported along with copies of all of the media files for that project. And that's what you'd want to use if you were you know, exporting this up to a server or to an external hard drive that you were then going to unplug and, and, and give to a friend so that they can open it up on their system. Consolidate from source, will copy real quick, will um, include all of the media, whether or not it's being used in the timeline or not. So that's something to think about. A lot of times you can have a lot of regions in your regions list and, um, you know, a third, you know, a third or a half of them are only are being used in the timeline. So if you choose copy from source media, it's going to include all of those, which could chew up a lot of extra space that you didn't need to. That's where consolidate from source media comes into play. Consolidate from source media is actually going to only copy the media files that are actually on the timeline, being used on the timeline. So that can save you a lot of space, as well as act as a, a certain sort of security measure so that uh, they, they, the person you're sending this uh, AAF export or OMFI export to can only get or see the media that's actually on the timeline. In this instance, I'm going to link to source media because of the fact that I'm going to export it on this computer onto this computer that I'm on right now, and then I'm going to open it on this same computer. So there's no need to create a duplicate copy of the media files. Handle size... <clears throat> What this does for you is it, is it actually, if you look at my mouse cursor here, it actually will, on your audio files as they're exported, provide a little bit of extra uh, audio at the head and tail of the clip, giving you a little bit of extra audio at that head and tail of the, of the audio file, I should say, so that when you I import that audio file or open it up in the next application and you're looking to trim the region out or, or clip out or potentially do some sort of crossfade. You have a little bit extra audio there to work with. Because sometimes you if you know if your handle size was set to zero and you export and you try to do some sort of crossfade or trim it out, there's nothing to be trimmed out. So the default's a thousand milliseconds and I've always had really good luck with that, so I'm gonna roll with that. From there your publishing options for the AAF or OMFI will come up. I'm going to name the sequence, which is just fine the way it is, AAF export. Um, comments, um, from there I can actually type in, you know, mix or let's say sound design as of 11, 5, 12. All right, hit OK. It says where, you, where do you want to uh, save it now. Now this is really important because if I chose copy from source media or consolidate from source media, it will include all those audio files. If I chose embedded, that's one thing. It's going to export the AAF file, and inside of that AAF file will be all of the media files embedded within. So it doesn't create much of a mess when you do an embedded uh, AAF or OMFI. But when you do uh, copy from source media or consolidate from source media, you'll have the AAF file, and then all beside that AAF file, all of the media files, which could be hundreds if not thousands, depending on how big your project is. That could create a, a huge mess in the directory you're exporting to. So the first thing I do is create a new folder, and I'm going to call this AAF export. Now, of course, the name is already taken. Uh, so AAF export one, just whatever. Um, and from there, I'm going to call, I'm going to name the AAF, AAF export one, and hit save. And it just went through and exported this project as an AAF copying, or sorry, uh, linking uh, to source media. All right, so I'm going to hide Pro Tools and just give you a little shot, show you what uh, that looks like there. 
if we go to my documents folder, you can see that um, there's the AAF export Pro Tools project. But if I go to AAF export one, that's the folder I created, and you'll notice there's an AAF file in there, advanced authoring format dot AAF. That's kind of my generic, quote unquote, generic session document. Um, and you may go, well, where are all the media files? Well, remember I linked to source media. This AAF is referencing the media files in my audio files folder and video files folder of my Pro Tools project. If I chose consolidate or copy from source media in this AAF export one folder you see here, I would see an AAF and a bunch of media files alongside of it if it was copy uh, or consolidate. And if I chose embed, you would see the same thing you see here. It's just that inside of this AAF, you would have all your media files folders, uh, or sorry, media files. And another dead giveaway here is that the size of this, the size of this uh, media or this AAF export here is 481 kilobytes. That's a dead giveaway that that AAF file is has is not embedded. There's no media files inside of it. However, if you saw something like, you know, three gigabytes or something like that. That's a dead giveaway that, hey, there's something embedded inside of that AAF, some media files. All right, so from here, you can see that I exported that AAF. Now I'm going to show you how to import an AAF into Pro Tools. So close that out, go back over to Pro Tools. In this instance, I'm actually going to Shift-Command-W, close my uh, Pro Tools project here. I am going to save it and leave Pro Tools open. And from here, I'm actually going to literally, multiple ways you could do this, I could just find the file, the AAF file um, in its directory and double click it with Pro Tools open. I could also have a session open in Pro Tools and uh, double click it that way and import into this, the current session that's open. But let's just do this, let's just say you're starting from scratch in a new application, pretend it's logic or something else, or let's say an AAF or OMFI was exported from, you know, like Cubase, and I'm bringing it in now into Pro Tools. So I'm just going to make sure Pro Tools is launched, completely open, and then uh, I'm going to find the AAF and double click it. And you can see Pro Tools responds and says, hey, yeah, you double clicked an AAF or OMFI, but you don't have a session open yet to import this AAF or OMFI into. So what I'm gonna, what it does is it actually says, "Hey, create a session." So in this instance, it's go a good thing to know is what the bit depth, file type, sample rate of your incoming AAF or OMFI's media is. And I happen to know that it's 24 bit, 48 kilohertz wave or broadcast wave. So I'm gonna set it to that. Good thing to find out before you import. Um, so in this instance, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit OK, and I'm gonna create. Uh, a Pro Tools project, and instead of AAF export, I'm going to call it AAF import. And you can see that it creates the session, and it brings up the import session data dialog, but the import session data dialog almost looks the same, except for a few things down on the lower left-hand side here. All right. Now, very simply put, um, your source properties are up in the upper left-hand corner, the name of the project, the type of project, the time code start, the time code format, bit depth sample rate file type. Um, it actually it lets me, uh, upon import as well, uh, select how I want to deal with the media. Do I want to link to it, copy it, consolidate it, or force it to the target session format? In this uh, situation, because I know the media exists on this local drive, I'm going to link to source media. If I copied, I'd be creating a duplicate on my current computer for no reason. Same with consolidate and same with force to uh, target session format. Um, if, you know, uh, scenarios where you'd want to copy or consolidate or force would be those, all those three will actually create a copy. In those scenarios, uh, you know, friend gives you or colleague gives you an external hard drive with an AAF export on it, with the media files on it, you plug it into your computer but want to get everything necessary for the project and, and so that, that the, the person giving you that project can then take their drive back, right? So in that situation, I would copy, consolidate. Um, those two things do the same as I said before, force to target session format. Target session format actually 
creates a copy, but it forces it to the session format as stated above, bit depth, file type, sample rate, time code formats, uh, session start time. It'll convert all that for you. All right. So in this scenario, link to source media, same for video, though I don't have any video, so uh, hence, hence it's grayed out. In the upper right hand corner, I have some time code options. Really simply put, in this instance, I can maintain absolute time code value because the session or project start of my AAF is one hour, as I can see right here, and the session start of my, my session in the background is one hour. So I can maintain absolute, meaning no change, and be just fine. Now, if the start time of the AAF differed from uh, the start time of my current session open in the background, I could maintain relative, and it'll make it'll basically loc or position the the start of the AAF uh, pr incoming project to the start of my current uh, Pro Tools project open in the background. Um, and you can get real specific with mapping time code. I could say I want the incoming AAF to be positioned at a specific time code value other than the actual start of my Pro Tools project in the background, so on and so forth. I'm going to maintain absolute. I don't need to offset any tracks. That could create a problem, though it can correct, correct, it can correct an error. It also can create a problem if you just go messing with it and uh, for no reason. Apply sample rate conversion. I don't need to do that. Um, no sense in converting if I'm already at 48. Um, also, next thing I need to do, you'll notice that the import session data dialog comes with opens automatically with all the tracks selected to import to new track. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, make sure they're importing to a new track. Um, I can also import any rendered audio effects from the from the project or uh, basically get picky. I can choose to not import the rendered audio effects or import them. I could import clip gain. I could also import volume automation. I could also choose to pan odd tracks left and even tracks right. I'm actually going to not do any of that. I don't need it. Um, I can actually also uh, be specific about what markers I want to import, all, none, or specific colors. That's really cool. Track data to import. I'm going to choose all. And I'm going to make sure and import main playlist options or uh, replacing main playlists. Um, hit OK. And you'll notice now I have the tracks imported. It's going to say, hey, I can't find the audio files. It'll look for them and find them automatically find and relink. If I switch over to my edit window, you'll see that it found them real quick. So don't get too worried about the can't find the audio files automatically find and relink. It'll find them. That's the, the job of the uh, software and it will find them just fine. So once again, that is how you, you can see I've got the, uh, real quick you can see that's uh, that I've got all the tracks, the track names, um, the regions or clips I should say and where they exist on the timeline. And it would also include any uh, volume automation and pan automation if I chose to do that. You see that it actually does have that stuff there. Um, so that's the kind of stuff you can do with AAF export and import. Um, again, this is Jeff Delorier at the Institute of Production and Recording, Program Chair for the Sound Design for Visual Media Department. Um, have a good day. I hope this helps you out.